Blender's community has allowed you to learn Blender a lot easier because of the fact that uh, people are breaking it down in a lot more kind of digestible form for people to learn. But I think for me at the beginning when there wasn't as many videos, it's scary to kind of start that learning curve and get over the part where you don't understand anything. I share always because I, I've learned from people who share their knowledge and I try to do the same because I think it's the fair thing and make the community keep growing because if they grow, I will grow too because I will have more resources. The amazing thing was that some members of the Blender Foundation were here and they were really eager to have feedbacks from their tools and to have use case of them so that they know how it behaves in the real production and how to improve them basically. So in Blender right now, Grease Pencil has become an incredibly popular tool, especially among the storyboard community, because it's giving us an opportunity to board in a 3D space. So as you're looking at the space in which you're working, you can instantly change what kind of camera you're using, and you also don't need to redraw your backgrounds constantly. I think that there is a way to make your backgrounds look 2D, and so that's essentially what my talk was about and what I'm working on, making a world that already appears 2D, so when you start sketching in it, it looks like it seamlessly integrates. It looks like they just belong. So I did an introduction on basically the last year of development of Grease Pencil, what we worked on and what's gonna be in the upcoming 4.3 release. And we basically did a showcase on the Grease Pencil projects we, um, we did during the development, which were tailored towards testing Grease Pencil 3. In production, Grease Pencil has evolved a lot. There have been bigger projects now that are using Grease Pencil in production. I just talked to somebody who works on a TV series that uses a lot of line art, lots of Grease Pencil. And the, the challenges are mostly like technical, the ease of use for artists. Performance often also comes up. When you have bigger production files, you have lots of strokes, lots of drawings. Things can slow down. So the usability of the tools and the performance is what we try to focus on. The talk was about the new technology with geometry nodes that we developed for the gold production at the Blender Studio, where we're going for a very stylized, oil painterly look that was like a very unique kind of a thing that we wanted to achieve with some sort of new technology that we didn't really know in the beginning. So uh, we spent a bunch of time developing this specific tool set. I work a lot with the geometry nodes. So I think this is the part of Blender that uh, currently evolves really fast. And uh, with uh, every new feature, we're eager to try them and to apply them in our work. Everything can be done with geometric nodes. I used to do point clouds also. Geometric node made so many things in that also very much easier. Converting meshes into point clouds, all those things. We kind of focused the, the Blender development also more on the side of empowering people to create their own tools rather than hard coding everything into Blender to allow all sorts of creative solutions for specific looks in a production environment. The talk was about how would someone start to contribute to Blender using my own uh, story about how I started to contribute to, to the video sequence editor one year ago. Some of the open source projects have a very hard contributor process in terms of they don't accept outside contributions as easily as Blender does. Two to three years ago I joined the animation module and I'm still providing feedback sometimes, testing out new features. You need testers to see what's going wrong. Well and I'm really glad I can help. So there's a lot of people in the community with great expertise in different areas, the art or the coding or the GPU or whatever. And having access to those people that you only find in open source communities is extremely valuable to, to the development of Blender. The main goal for me was really to get attention to the compositor. There is something happening here. There is a lot of great work being done. 
So I wanted to share that with the community and also get the attention of the artists to give more feedback, to tell us what they need and how we should move forward. It is our mission to make open source software available to people. And available can mean that it's compliant and certified with a bunch of government regulations. It can also mean that someone who's in a context where they can only afford an old used laptop that's barely fast enough to run a modern version of Windows still has access to the same level of tooling. I think one of the things that I was happiest about was the denoising because my machine was not powerful at all and to get a crisp, beautiful render, the render time was like 30 minutes for one image. It was, I can't do that. But then suddenly I could render one scene in like three minutes instead of 30. I think the short answer is impact. 20 million downloads, we estimate like two to four million active users. The community is super active and engaging and passionate that they tell us what they need. I'm in the developer team, but I'm not a programmer. I'm an artist working closely with developers. Develop with Pencil, with Pencil VR, all this kind of thing. The thing is how to put all these options thinking about uh, artists using these tools. And of course, it's a balance. I gave a talk about color management and kind of how to establish your own color management workflow. It's kind of been a topic that many people struggle to understand as I did. My talk, Game Art Insights, Art Tech and Teamwork was basically learnings and my experiences from using Blender in non-Blender game pipelines. I think I've found quite a few workflows and solutions how to automate simplifying your data basically from this very non-destructive workflow to exporting it, basically bridging that gap. Well, we had a talk about uh, how we integrate our, in our pipeline some open source tools and how we try to, to extend them and to share them to the, to the community. During the talk, we tried to share the core concept that lies behind the adaptation we made on the tools and we hope that people will try to take with them those concepts and apply it to open source tools in order to share them easily and less context destructively. I hope that it's clear that pipelines is not only about scripted tools, it's about finding processes of doing something and they can be tools. A pipeline is not just about you, but it's about working with a team. Others need to adjust to you, but you need to adjust to them as well. And then for the next award, for best animation, it is Solo, Mundo Canibal. Thank you so much. For the best short film, Koji by Robbie McFadden and Glenn Johnson. It's been three, four years. I hope that Blender is still listening to, to its community. It's been around much longer than most other software, actually. And it's still around and it's growing and it has momentum. So I, I hope it will continue that momentum and it will get better. I think Blender is in a very unique spot where we have many things working together, like the rendering, the compositing, the animation in one software. The way I wish Blender would develop even more in that direction is where we have more and more of the pipeline in a single step. I think in the next three to five years, I really do hope that we can develop a pipeline for whatever your project is, whatever you're working on, where you don't have to leave Blender.